As the winter season winds down, tournaments are on the horizon. The competition heats up on high school sports scene. Welcome to this edition of High School Sports Scene. I'm Sydney Callahan. We begin our coverage of the 4A-3A North Regional Duels Wrestling Championship. Baltimore County teams made up three-fourths of the wrestling squads at the 4A-3A North Regional Duel matches held at Hereford High. In one semifinal, the top-seeded Bulls faced the four-seed Eastern Tech. The Bulls got off to a strong start. Junior Kevin Wheeler scored a pin at 126 pounds. Freshman Dylan Gray got another at 132. And Charles Stafford added a pin at 138 to stake the Bulls to an 18-0 lead. The Mavericks did not give up, earning decisions in five of the next six matches as Stephen Beam, Dustin Shackelford, Ilya Yusik, Nathaniel Gale and Mitchell Burns picked up wins, making the score Hereford 24, Eastern Tech 15. But the Bulls closed out strong with pins by junior Mike Swiger at 220, junior Patrick Anderson at 285 pounds, and sophomore Anthony Jenko at 106 pounds to earn a 42-26 win and advance to the final. Meanwhile, in the other semi, third seed Perry Hall faced the number two seed Frederick County's Urbana High School. The Gators jumped out to a 6-0 lead behind decisions by Sean Murphy at 126 pounds and Sean Taylor at 132. Nate Liberto scored a pin at 145 pounds for Perry Hall. The teams exchanged wins in the middleweights bringing the score to 27-27. But Urbana took the last three matches to earn a 36-27 victory. The final between Hereford and Urbana was a seesaw battle most of the way. Dylan Gray earned a 5-4 decision to take the 132-pound match. Senior Joe Ramsell scored a first period pin at 145. Freshman Billy Hess followed with a 6-3 decision at 152 pounds giving the Bulls a 12-6 lead. Following a pair of Urbana wins, sophomore Brock Turnball got a pin at 182 pounds to make it 18-12 Bulls. At 220, junior Mike Swiger earned a 5-1 decision to keep the Bulls ahead 21-18. But that would be the last time Hereford would lead as Urbana earned decisions in the next four matches en route to a hard-fought 32-27 regional title. As the regular season winds down in both boys and girls basketball, a couple of big games will determine who makes it to the county championship. On the boys' side, the top two teams in the 2A, 1A division met for a shot at the title game and neighborhood bragging rights. The Owens Mills Eagles travel to Randallstown to take on their rivals, the Randallstown Rams. Fans were eager to watch a good game, but little did they know they were going to witness a nail-biter. The game got off to a fast start with a fast break from the Eagles with an easy score. But the Rams came right back with a nice up and under move by Marcus Varner, and he gets fouled on the play. Rams controlled the game and was able to build an 11-point lead, but the Eagles fought back with a three-pointer by Ahmad Wilson. Halftime score, Rams 32, Eagles 28. Second half was no different. The Rams pound the ball inside with Marcus Varner, and then they came right back with a layup by Justin Ward. The Rams built another lead, but this time the Eagles came soaring back with a nice move by Ahmad Wilson and a three-pointer by Renard Johnson. Then a steal by Ahmad, who went coast to coast, followed up his own miss with a layup. 
The Rams were down by three. The Rams weren't done yet. Sophomore Jarrell Cook, who had ice in his veins, fired a long three, which forced the game into its first overtime. In the first OT, the Eagles were able to get some easy shots, but the Rams were good from the strike, which sent the game into a second overtime. In the final seconds of the second OT, an up and under move by Deshante Lloyd put the Eagles up by one. Rams were looking for Jarrell to take the shot, but good defense forces him to pass to Justin Bryce, who banks in a three, which puts the Rams up by three. Ahmad tries a desperation shot, which is no good. The Rams won a thriller, 91 to 89. What a game. On the girls' side, the top two teams in the 4A3A division met with a berth in the county championship game at stake. With the regular season winding down, the top two girls' teams in the county 3A-4A division met at Milford Mill as the Millers played host to the Catonsville Commons. The first quarter was tight as the teams traded scores. Deanna White, who would have a huge game, got the Millers on the board first as she drove to the hoop for two. Taylor Barton immediately answered for the Comets. The period stayed back and forth until a pair of scores by Comet freshman Lauren McDonald put Catonsville up 11-9 at the end of one. In the second quarter, with White in foul trouble on the Millers bench, the Comets methodically began to build a lead. Deb Milani hit a three-pointer. Taylor Barton added points inside for Catonsville. And Comet leading scorer Rachel Schwab had a nice baseline drive for two as the Comets worked to a 24-13 lead at the half. The Millers seemed to settle down as they came out for the third. Deanna White returned to the floor and immediately made an impact, making a free throw and adding two points off an offensive rebound. White also added a steal and another score as the Millers whittled their deficit to four points midway through the third. However, Catonsville did not waver. Rebecca Schwab got two from the line. McDonald fed Daniel Francie inside for a score. And Schwab, cut inside for two off the inbound pass, was fouled and converted for the three-point play, pushing the Comets to a nine-point lead at the end of the third quarter. The Comets held on to that lead halfway through the fourth. Then Sierra Naylor dropped a three-pointer in to pull the Millers to within five. Down by four in the final minute, the Millers stole the inbound pass and Kayla Boyd scored to make it 50-48 Comets with 26 seconds left. Following a Taylor Barton free throw, Deanna White drove for two to make it 51-50 with 14 seconds to play. The Millers fouled Rebecca Schwab and she calmly hit both free throws, but with the clock ticking down, White took the ball down, pulled up, and drilled a three-pointer at the buzzer to tie the game at 53. In overtime, following a free throw by White, Deb Milani puts back a rebound for two. Maddie Hunt scored on the break to put the Comets up 58-54 with 44 seconds left in overtime. Once again, Deanna White came up big, putting in a missed free throw. And then driving for two points to tie the score at 59 and send the game to a second overtime period. Sierra Naylor hit her third three-pointer of the night to put Milford Mill up by three. Maddie Hunt scored on the break to cut the lead to one. Akiri Lewis made a pair of free throws for the Millers. Then, appropriately, White made a steal and took it in for the last two of her 31 points on the night to seal a come-from-behind 66-61 win for the Millers. One of the reasons for the Millers' success is senior guard Jasmine Agwan Rayford. She is also this month's outstanding female student athlete. Here's Capri Gaines with the story. Senior Jasmine Egwan Rayford is team captain of Milford Mill Academy's girls basketball team. Being a starting varsity point guard for all four years was something she had to get used to. 
When I was a freshman, because I was it's not that I was nervous, but I was a little like shaky because I was on a team with like mostly seniors. So I had to not like push that out the window and realize that I'm still the point guard and I'm still controlling everything. So I had to toughen up and I've gotten a lot tougher and I've taken a lot more control. On the court, Jasmine exhibits all the traits one wants in a point guard. You want a point guard that can see the floor. You want a point guard that knows where everyone should be and when they should get the ball and when they should not get the ball. You want a point guard that recognizes things about the other team and Jasmine does that very well. She's a good shooter. She can dribble well. She just great leader. She sees the floor, so she knows how to get around a lot. I like the fact that I, I'm, I'm handling the ball and everything that goes on revolves around me because I'm in control. Her coach and teammates alike admire Jasmine for her unparalleled leadership and her ability to communicate with her teammates. She's very much like a coach on the court. She knows all the offenses, defense, expectations. Um, she gets the team ready, makes sure that they're where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there, as well as in class. She keeps the team in check and on the court and off the court. She, she makes sure that we are prepared for the game and make sure that we are doing things right. Jasmine is sure never to let personal relationships interfere with the team aspect. We're really close, but once again, she keeps the friendship and the teammate kind of separate. So if I'm messing up, she would be sure to put me in my place. And if I'm doing good, that, but off the court, we're just as close regardless if she's yelling at me or not. Understanding that defense was once her weakest point, Jasmine made a conscious effort to improve an effort her teammates can see. My biggest weakness was defense because I was like a little slow, but I've improved my speed and I've gotten a lot better on defense. On the court, she, at first she was a little iffy on defense, but she stepped up her game and now her defense is her own point. Off the court, Jasmine recognizes one of the hardest aspects of being a student athlete. I think I've developed as a student athlete, I've gotten a lot better as far as my grades and realizing that, like I said, school comes first. And I, it's not just all about basketball. It's, I'm a student athlete, so I'm a student first. So I have to do what I need to do in school. Jasmine makes it her priority to lead her team by example and always promote a positive team dynamic. During the heat of the game, it will hurt my team. If I put my head down, they'll see that negative attitude. So I have to make sure that at all times I'm being positive and keeping a good outlook on the whole game. So that way, my, that way my team can feed off of my positive energy and they'll become positive. When Jasmine's happy, everybody's happy. When she's upset, it's just, it brings the whole mood down because she's like the light bulb of the team. She just motivates the whole team. We would like to wish Jasmine the best of luck with the remainder of her basketball season and with all future endeavors. For High School Sports Scene, I'm Capri Gaines. Congratulations to Jasmine. To honor her selection as this month's Outstanding Female Student Athlete, she will receive an award provided by Allergram Incorporated and Timonium. Coming up next is Randy Dace with Coach's Corner. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of High School Sports Scene. We hope you'll join us then. Until then, I'm Sydney Callahan. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Randy Dace and welcome to Coach's Corner. My guests today are Gina Young, the girls varsity basketball coach at Newtown High School, and a four-year senior guard, Jacqueline Churchill. Ladies, welcome to high school sports scene. And coach, you're off to a great start this year. You're 16 and three, it's your first year as a coach. You got one more game to go. What's it been like? <laughs> it's been wonderful. Um... Oh my God, I'm getting tongue tied. Did you, did you did you expect to have such a great record coming into the season? Um, no, I thought it was going to start out pretty slow. Um, you know, you got girls that's pretty, basically brand new to the program. Mm -hmm. You have four or five returning players, and you got the other five that's fresh. Well, they you know four or five freshmen. Mm -hmm. Jacqueline, so, you're as as a four year starter, okay? 
Um, what were your goals come November 15th when you started practice? Um, my, was, my goal was to put a, get a banner up there. I've been playing for four years, so I wanted to leave with something. And um, basically, I like the chemistry that we have, so I like the way we're going, and I can see us getting that banner. So is this the, the best season so far? Yes, the best well, season It's always so best far. to save the best for last, right, Coach? <laughs> yeah. Now, Coach, it's sort of interesting. Last year, you were the assistant coach, right? Yes. And now you're the head coach. Yeah. Um, tell me, what's, what's the real difference in terms of uh, how you handle the situation? Um, the real difference is, as an assistant coach, you more or less, you know, got to play the background to the head coach, um, the X and O's, and, you know, you got to have the coaches back at some point. Um, being a head coach is more or less, you're in front of everyone, the kids are there, um, they looking for you to be their role model, so, you know, to grow on or whatever. So basically um, you're driving the car before right. you're sitting in the back seat, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love um, you. Jacqueline, tell me a little bit about her as a coach. Is she, she fiery? She, she fiery. throw the clipboard? She yells? She's, tell me about her. She's fiery. I think um, she's fiery, but we're able to relate with her because she's, she, you know, she's a female and she pushes us, but we don't get mad because that's what we want. Like last year, um, she was more like behind the scenes, but we could see that we liked when she did tell us things. We liked how she spoke to us. And right now she pushes us. She tells us something in a forceful way, and we get it. We go out there and we do it. We get it done. Now, Coach, what does Jacqueline bring to your team? Jacqueline is an exceptional defender player. Mm -hmm. um, she's not an offensive threat, but when I need her to shut down a player, she's the one I go to. It's funny because I, we were just talking before we started the tape, and you said you love defense. I love defense. What's so defense. exciting about defense? Defense, you can switch it up at any point. You can go from a 1-2-2, two, two, a 2-3, two, a 1-3-1, one, one, and Right now, they're going 94 feet of pressure, at drop oh back boy. to the half. You know, whatever I need done, they get it done on defense for me. I'm an old boys coach, right? <laughs> but I've always watched girls basketball, and you have the shot clock. So I'm wondering, you're telling me, don't you press every time with the shot clock? We press just to put the pressure on the ball yeah. so they can run the shot clock down. Mm -hmm. So when we drop back in the half court, off, I mean, half court set, it's more or less they only have maybe 10 to 15 seconds to get a shot off. Do you play any man-to-man, -man day? Mm -hmm. Some. We mm -hmm. play some until, you know, somebody uh, forget to do their assignment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real breakdown there. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, she said offensively, you're sort of, you get a lot of assists, or you set the show up. How's it work on the offense? Um, I can get a lot of assists, you know. I know who to pass it to, you know. And I, for the most part, I make smart passes well, I try to you know sometimes I have those moments but yeah because I guess from my years I know I know which player is going to do what so I know who I can pass it to at certain times. How many seniors are on the team? Only two I'm one of two seniors wow. on the team. Mm -hmm. That's outstanding. So you have, are mostly juniors? Do you have any sophomores? Um, one sophomore, one sophomore four, three, four freshmen. Four freshmen wow. and three juniors. three juniors. We so only have ten players. Yeah. Only ten players. Mm -hmm. Well, you're lucky the flu season hasn't hit, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had that. We had a couple girls went out yeah. for the flu. We had eight players. We was down to eight. But, you know, and then we have Jenna who's out on injury. So, now, I, I, I haven't seen you guys play, but uh, are you, like, patient on the half court or do you like to get the fast break transition going? We there? actually a fast break team. Mm -hmm. yeah. We like secondary breaks and get, get, a, get the ball up the court, make the layup, set your press, and let's rock and roll. You have, some, you have any size, Coach? Um, we have two six-foot, six-two players, mm -hmm. and then from there, it drops. It down drops. to 5'5". Five, five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jacqueline, how tall are you? 5'3", um, and I'm, <laughs> it's about four of me. Are there? <laughs> yeah. But I bet you're pretty quick and pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> Now, in the spring, I heard uh, you run the track. Mm -hmm. Tell I us about track. your track a little bit in the spring. Um, I'm looking for, to go to states this year. Mm -hmm. Last year, I didn't make states. I got cut off of regionals because of an injury. So I'm trying to make it to Morgan State this year so I can. Okay. Yeah. And what events do you run in track? I do the 100 mainly, but I do the 4x1, the 4x2, and the 400 if they make me. Wow. Very good. Now, Coach, I said you're 16 and three. Mm -hmm. uh, two of your three losses, though, are to some pretty, pretty tough programs. Mm -hmm. Catonsville and Milford have always had some pretty solid mm -hmm. programs. If you win your next game, you said you'd probably qualify for the counties. Mm -hmm. um, 
who would you probably see in the county championship? According to what I just saw, probably right. Milford Mill. Okay. Um, and I know you played Milford before, but mm -hmm. you got to play the game to see who's going to win, right? Right. Any, uh, any secret weapons you could pull out of your back pocket? Because I know you got <laughs> beat on the first time. No, I mean, I think we need to do a better, um, better job on defense. That's where we fell apart at. It wasn't the offense, mm -hmm. and it was the more that our defense fell apart. A lot of girls want to reach at the last second oh. and, again, miss assignment. So they don't want to move those feet, right. huh? Right, they don't want to move them <laughs> legs. I don't know why. Bonbons, maybe. <laughs> Jacqueline, what do you think? What do you think about Milford? Can you take them? I'm waiting. I'm waiting to You're beat waiting? them. We haven't beat them in four years, I don't think. And they need to be knocked off their high horse. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, now, I know you're going to finish up with Randallstown. Is that a big rivalry, Coach? Yes, it is. So the gym will be packed and mm -hmm. everybody will be having a good time. Right. Jacqueline, do you, do you enjoy, I know basketball is a very intense sport, okay? Mm -hmm. You usually have a, a pretty decent crowd, especially a Friday night game and a mm -hmm. rivalry. Do you enjoy everybody yelling and screaming? Yeah, I like, I like it. When I was younger, I was kind of scared, but I like it. It motivates me kind of when I hear somebody, you know. So you like that intensity? Things. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I think, I, just, I think for basketball, it's, as a coach, it's like driving a car, too, because <laughs> you've got to make so many adjustments. Right. But everybody's yelling and everybody's mm -hmm. screaming all the time. Coach, why do you like basketball so much? You're, you, you come back, you've, I know you coached a little bit of Ranstown, now you're back in Newtown. What brings you to the sport? I, I love the sport. Uh, it's a passion of mine mm -hmm. since I was in high school. Um, it's just a driving force that... You know, I just want to take what I learned through the years of playing and then instill it in the girls. So hopefully they'll learn something from it. Is there a college coach that you uh, always maybe read a little about or go to clinics that you like? I read about Tennessee, mm -hmm. Pat Summit. Right. I, that's who I idolize. Okay. Pat Summit. And how about you, Jack? Are you a college basketball fan? Yeah, I watch it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Got any favorite team out there? Um, I like Maryland, Baylor. UConn last year. Yeah. yeah. Well, UConn's a safe bet, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I heard that also at school that you're involved in a special program at school. You want to tell us about the AVID program? Oh, yeah. the AVID program. I've been in that for four years mm -hmm. as well. And now I'm helping um, younger freshmen in it. I have three siblings in it. So, you know, I just like to help kids get to college, you know. To Can you them. tell us the purpose of the program? Oh, the program, the purpose of the program is to um, send, send kids to college basically with a lot of scholarship money. Mm -hmm. And at Newtown, we have like one the best program as far as raising scholarship money and getting kids to college. So that's what the main goal of it is, college readiness, getting kids ready for college. So uh, Coach, she's a fine example of a student athlete. Yes, she is. And when we talk about student athletes, usually they're winners in the, in the long run. So we got the county championship coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully you get to the county championship. And then it then comes the regionals. You want to tell us a little bit about the regionals and how that looks, Coach? Um, the way the regional works right now, we're setting number one mm -hmm. in our regions in the 1A North. So hopefully we'll get a bye in the first round and play whatever team that's coming out. And the, the regionals, you have people coming in from Baltimore City, other counties, and so you, you got to do a little bit of scouting. And being yeah. the number one seed is nice, though. You get, all, you get a home game, won't you, Coach? Mm -hmm. You get a home game, possibly two home games and then the regional championship. Sounds good. Well, listen, ladies, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. And, uh, Coach, I want to wish you luck, and hopefully you have a long tenure there at um, Newtown, Lady uh, Titans, right? <laughs> yes. And, uh, Jacqueline, congratulations on a great career, and Thank hopefully you. you can get to that county championship and maybe make a good run in the regions. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. For High School Sports Scene, I'm Randy Dace. Thanks for watching. See you next time.